Hello everyone. It is an exciting day. We are finally going to propagate our pink princess, philodendron pink princess. And you all know these plants are very hard to find and I was lucky enough to get one last year and it has been growing okay. Um, I've been struggling with some humidity issues. That's why I have some deformed leaves here, but you know we're we're still living and we're gonna move forward with the propagation so my plan is to start low and kind of break it up as i go here i know that i want at least one node um which is where these little aerial roots are growing out of i know i, I want at least one node per cutting um, and thankfully my plant is, has beautiful variegation, so I really don't need to be worried about that at all. But um, aesthetically, you know, I'm concerned. So I'm going to start down here at the first messed up leaf, which is exactly when I got my plant. And I definitely do not want to cut the node itself. And I can see where the node is because it's where the leaf originates. So the node is actually on the inside of the petillar pe pe petillar sheath i don't know how to say that um, but basically the leaf so the plant's actually missing a leaf right here but i know that the node is right here um where that leaf used to be so i i like that i can see that node and that it's got a little bump and everything so i'm going to cut above that hoping that that will be my new growth point for the mama plant I've got a sharp knife that I just uh, sanitized with alcohol and I'm going to try and cut at a 45 degree angle above the node. Okay. That. Looks like I've made a beautiful cut. I don't know if you can see that the plant is starting to try to clot the wound just like we do as humans. And I am going to allow that clot to form over a few hours before I do anything with it. But before that happens, we are gonna take a few more cuttings and I'm gonna to attempt to adjust the camera angle so you can see me cut up this larger piece. Always learning with the videos here. Always a new experience. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm looking at my first cutting here and I want to give my cuttings the best chance for survival. So I will be ensuring that they have a leaf to go with them. It's not a requirement, but it will give the plant more energy to move faster. So I'm going to cut again right above this leaf, which will give this plant one, two, three nodes would be this potential cutting. I would expect these bottom two to probably form roots and um, this point here inside of the fully formed leaf to be the growth point. I'm gonna make my next, actually before I make my next cut, I am gonna just be a crazy person and clean my knife in between. Just like humans, um, these cuts can get infected and get dirty and have all kinds of problems with them. So that's why we want to treat everything sterile. Same thing, I'm going to avoid cutting the actual node. I'm looking for about a 45 degree angle. Look at that philodendron blood. Okay, so this is now my first intact cutting. That's a beautiful looking plant, has one big healthy leaf which even is attractive, not that it needs to be. And then these two leaves, I will, um, I'll probably remove, but give me, give me a second to work up into all that. Okay, now I'm feeling bold, let's keep moving. So my next cutting, um, I think I'm going to make these two nodes. So I will cut above here. It will have one node Two node. That might be cutting it a little close, but as you can see, I'm going to have three or four cuttings by the end of this, so I can be a little bit more aggressive than if it was my only cutting. 
So here I go again, I'm in between the two nodes, 45 degree angle with my sharp clean knife. And here's my next cutting, which will probably be my smallest cutting to date. Okay, it smells like chlorophyll in here. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm left with is the top and I definitely think we can cut this again. I could cut another two, two node cutting here, one, two, or I could include this third one here, which I think I will do because the, the top of the plant is the most, um, it has the most growth hormone, auxin in it. And so it will be most likely to be successful on its own. So I would rather give the extra node to further down on the plant. So I'm going to cut here is my next one. Oh, I'm bleeding all over the table. And again, that's nothing to be alarmed about. That would be the same as us trying to clot our own wound here. It's a sign of a healthy plant. I did water this plant very thoroughly about two or three days ago. And um, that is just so important to start with a super hydrated plant. Like it can be really tempting while you're watering your plants to want to take cuttings then because you're touching them, but you really want to wait a few days and that's going to give your cutting a little bit more runway to get its roots going and everything else before it starts getting thirsty again. So I'm cutting here between the two nodes. No problems. We're cruising now. So I've got four beautiful cuttings plus my original mother plant. I'm feeling pretty good about that. The plan for these cuttings is then going to be to sit out for some amount of time. I'm just hanging out here with the shelter in place. So I'll, I'll be checking on them, but I'll set a timer for probably about two hours. What I wanna see is that the open wet wounds have calloused uh, and are dry. And then I'll go ahead and dip them in root hormone. I have, this one is just handy right here. Um, and this is the cheap stuff, but I actually have some really fancy um, Clonex that they use for marijuana plants, and I'm gonna try that. Uh, but same kind of program, they have these active ingredients that um, are basically synthetically, uh, synthetically similar to the natural growth hormones that the plant produces, and that's going to help the bottom part of the cutting, get that signal, produce roots, produce roots. And hopefully what we'll see is the uh, aerial roots, these adventitious roots here that are growing around the node, those are gonna start to produce. I'm anticipating those will be where the first roots will form. First, there will be long primary roots and then lateral roots that will grow up from there. Once I'm starting to see those lateral roots growing, that's when I'm gonna feel good about potting up the plant. I'm going to put these cuttings in sphagnum moss. I'll grab some of that so you can see it. Here's my sphagnum moss, really fresh and clean. I've got a link for um, the kind I used up in my Amazon shop now, but this is just damp sphagnum moss and this is what I'm going to root these cuttings in after they've dried and had their horm growth hormone. Um, I'm not using a heating mat because I read a bunch of reviews and I felt like um, they were fire hazards and kind of scary, but I do have a heating pad that I use for personal use that I'm going to warm up the moss in just when I put them in and whenever I feel like remembering. <laughs> and for mama plant here, she needs nothing. She's just going to do her thing. I'll continue to care for her as usual. I won't treat that wound. I'll just let it air dry and, um, the plant will find its way. I'm anticipating that there will be growth out of that growth point that we looked at right here. Um, and if, if that doesn't happen, if the plant so totally stops growing, then I'll start thinking about interventions like putting cloning paste on the, the node there. But I think that with springtime and the growth rate of this plant up to this point, all of these cuttings I'm anticipating will be successful. If any of them are not successful, it will probably be this one, the two node one, but 
I thought with four cuttings here, um, I could afford to experiment a little with you guys. So thanks for joining me. I will keep you guys updated as we progress along here and let you know how these cuttings hopefully take root. So thanks for tuning in and talk to you later. Bye.